committee will remember I just made the point about the, the photographs and uh, I, I'd asked why on earth we would have held illicit or not, uh, unauthorised gatherings in the presence of an, an official photographer. Then I went on to say, most important of all, if it was obvious to me that these events were contrary to the guidance and the rules, then it must have been equally obvious to dozens of others, including the most senior officials in the country, all of them, most of them like me, responsible for drawing up the rules, and it must have been obvious to others in the building, including the current Prime Minister. On the contrary, the overwhelming evidence which you have assembled is that these individuals believed that the rules and the guidance were being complied with. And what is so telling is the number of officials who say the same thing and the total silence of the written or electronic record about concerns that anyone wanted to raise with me. It would be one thing if the committee had come here today and said, look, here are the emails or here are the WhatsApps that show that you were warned about rule breaking before you made your statements to the House. You haven't got any such evidence because that never happened. But if you now say instead that it must have been obvious that we were going against the rules and the guidance, then let's be clear about what you are saying. You're not only accusing me of lying, you're accusing all those civil servants, advisors, MPs, of lying about what they believed at the time to be going on. And as far as I know, you're not giving any of them the chance to explain themselves with their own oral evidence. I don't think you seriously mean to accuse those individuals of lying, and I don't think you can seriously mean to accuse me of lying. Now, everyone knows that there are some features of this proceeding that are extremely peculiar. I have the utmost respect for you, the Chair, but uh, you have said some things about this matter before reading the evidence, which are plainly uh, and wrongly prejudicial or prejudge the very issue on which you are adjudicating. I'm going to put your earlier remarks down to the general cut and thrust of politics and trust in what you have stressed at the outset, the impartiality that the committee insists upon and, and insists upon in your report. The committee is in fact supposed to be inquiring strictly into what I said about rule breaking rather than non-statutory guidance, so much of this interrogation is theoretically irrelevant, but I'm going to take that in my stride because I, I, I agree with what you said at the outset. It is your job uh, in which I want to help you to understand why I said what I said to Parliament and whether I deliberately set out to deceive. And I emphatically did not. Your first concern is that I may have knowingly or recklessly deceived Parliament on the 1st and 8th December when I said that the rules had not been broken and the guidance had been followed completely in number 10. When I said those words, I was not trying to cover up or conceal anything. I said what I said in good faith, based on what I honestly knew and reasonably believed at the time. That belief, what was in my head, was based on my understanding of the rules and the guidance. That did not mean that I believed that social distancing was complied with perfectly. That is because I and others in the building did not believe it was necessary or possible to have a two meter or one meter after June the 24th, 2020, electrified force field around every human being. Indeed, that is emphatically not what the guidance prescribes. It specifically says that social distancing should be maintained where possible, having regard to the work environment. And it is clear that in number 10, we had real difficulties in both working efficiently and at speed and in maintaining perfect social distancing. It's a cramped, narrow uh, 18th century townhouse. We had no choice but to meet day in, day out, seven days a week in an unrelenting battle against COVID. I had to call many meetings on the spot and to call a great many, uh, make a great many high speed decisions. Yes, we certainly did have social distancing. We avoided physical contact. We gave way to each other in the corridors and on the stairs. We gave each other as wide a berth as we could. But it would have been impossible to have a drill sergeant measuring the distance between us all hours of the day and night. 